Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. I train you, I teach you, I help you. Speak English fluently, speak English powerfully, speak English confidently, speak English effortlessly. When you join, you commit. You must commit, don't quit. Commit, don't quit. To my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, EffortlessEnglishClub.com, commit, don't quit. This is the key to success. Today, we're talking about the power of reading, the power of reading. Following up on a video that Carol, our VIP member Carol, posted on Gab. I posted it again, and today I'm going to talk about it because it's a great video by a really great uh, researcher into language learning, someone who influenced me a lot, Dr. Stephen Krashen. It's actually a speech he gave at my university. Now, I did not get my, I did not go to the, I did not attend the education department at the University of Georgia. That's where he gave this speech, I believe. But University of Georgia is my university. We'll talk about it. I think this, uh, uh, this fits our challenge, of course, quite well because... We are doing our listening and reading challenge, listening and reading. And uh, it's, it's interesting. We call this a synchronicity, guys. Synchronicity. It's an, here's a nice word for you. Synchronicity. It was a song by the police. <laughs> but the, uh, the word synchronicity, it's kind of like coincidence. It's kind of like a coincidence. It's when two or more things happen that somehow seem to fit. It's usually a positive thing. Usually, this is usually a, a, used in a positive way, a fairly positive way. So, coincidence is two things happen that seem connected, but probably not connected. But synchronicity, it's describing the same kind of thing, but it has more of the idea that maybe there's more than, it's more than chance, it's not random. Maybe there's some kind of uh, spiritual or psychological force that's uh, making it happen. What am I talking about? Well, so three things happened in the last two days, can all connected to the same idea. Number one, I have been listening to the mini stories a lot, a lot, a lot in Japanese, and I started getting a little, starting a little tired. <laughs> as I've said before. So I've been now I've been wanting to go wide and I've been wanting to get more uh, vocab, right? To get and to do a bigger variety of things. And so I've been just realizing yes in the last couple of days I need to do a lot more reading. I need to do a lot more reading in Japanese. And specifically I'll be doing um, a lot of uh, manga and anime subtitles. That's what I'm I want to focus on. And then Carol posted the video about Dr. Krashen, and the title is The Power of Reading, The Power of Reading, which is also the name of one of Dr. Krashen's books. So number two, I'm just thinking about reading and I need to read more. And then Carol posts this. Of course, we're doing the challenge. It makes sense. And then Steve Kaufman just posted a video about how he's going to be reading more and trying to get wider, you know, uh, listening to and especially reading a wider variety of things to increase his vocab. So it's kind of these boom, boom, boom. In the last two days, these three things all happen at the same time. Kind of a synchronicity. No, I don't think it's anything magical. I think it's just, uh, just you know, we're doing a reading challenge now. But it kind of, they all go together and they fit. So it's a good time to talk about reading. I think today's a, it's a good time to talk about it. We're doing our challenge our last month. I've been focusing on the listening so much, maybe I haven't talked about reading enough. So this is a good opportunity to talk about reading and the power of reading.
What I'm going to start with first is showing you Dr. Krashen's video, the one that Carol posted, because I would like you to go and watch it, uh, because it's, it's good practice for you, because it's, of course, it's the speeches in English. So this is on YouTube, and you can find it. Let me just show you on the screen, if you're watching on the screen. Let me, there you go. If you're watching on the screen, you can see the title of the video. It's a YouTube video. It's uh, it's from the University of Georgia College of Education. Go dogs! And the title is "The Power of Reading." Stephen Krashen. Stephen. Stephen Krashen. Steve, we pronounce it Stephen. Stephen Krashen. Uh, it's but it's it's his name is spelled S T E P H E N. Stephen. Krashen, K-R-A-S-H-E-N, if you're listening. If you're watching, you can see it on the screen. All right, so The Power of Reading is the title, Stephen Krashen. If you just do a search for that, if you also put um, Georgia, University of Georgia, in your search, you'll definitely find this video. The Power of Reading, Stephen Krashen. So uh, it's, it's uh, almost an hour and it's him giving a speech about, well, guess what? The power of reading and how reading is so powerful for language learning and for many, 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 many different reasons. So I highly recommend go and watch this full video on YouTube. Just do a search. The Power of Reading, Stephen Krashen. Do your best. If you don't understand all of it, it's okay. But just try. Give it a try. See if you can understand. All right, next... He also has a book. Guess what the name of the book is? The same. The Power of Reading. Let me find it on my screen here. Second, guys, let me, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, okay, let me move it. If, for those of you watching on video, you can just see this is my Amazon, Amazon.com I'm showing you. But you can see again, the name of his book is The Power of Reading, Insights from the research. And again, same person, Stephen Krashen. If you are, if you're interested in the research behind all of this, then uh, that's a good book. If you're not interested in the research, just watch the speech. All right, let's just talk about it now. The power of reading. And let's just talk about a few of the things that are... Um, improved when you read and why reading is indeed so powerful and i'm going to pull up one second because i'm going to pull it up power of reading i have oh i don't one second crash and yeah i have it here's his book so i'm going to pull up the ebook and just going to scan i'm going to just read you a little bit from his book stephen crash's book about some of the <laughs> Some of the reasons you should read and why reading is indeed so powerful indeed. Okay. So first of all, number one, reading helps your native language and it helps you with foreign languages. So it helps with both. Okay. So a lot if extensive reading, meaning reading a lot of things, reading a lot of things helps with, you know, improving your ability to speak your language of course, to understand your language, and, uh, and it helps with grammar. It helps you improve your grammar, both your spoken grammar and your written grammar in your language and in any foreign language. It is the number one super powerful way to grow your vocabulary. There's really nothing better. There's no better way that I know, and I don't know of any research, any better way to grow your vocabulary, to learn more words, right? Then reading, extensive reading. That is the number one way to do it. Reading, reading, reading. That's it. Not uh, vocab books, not flashcards, not any apps, not any other kind of software, uh, not uh, TOEFL books, nothing else. Reading, reading, reading. And reading what? Again, it's very important that we talk about what it means. And I'm going to kind of, uh, let me just show you. I'm going to 
read from his book here or just highlight it. But the main thing about this is that it's he uses the term free voluntary. Okay, this is kind of one of Krashen's uh, phrases. It's the free voluntary reading. And as I said before, this is very important because this is all the research that he is has done or has analyzed. It's this specific kind of reading. So it's not just any kind of reading, right? Because some people say, well, I will read a textbook or I will read a vocabulary book. No, it's not that kind of reading. That will not help you. It's free voluntary reading. What does that mean? It means free, giving the idea that, that you're reading real things, books, right? That you're not being forced. There's no force. And voluntary, of course, has the same. It's really two words that are synonyms, free and voluntary. But the idea is that you're reading for pleasure. I think another way to say it is reading for pleasure. You're reading pleasurable books. This could include comic books are totally fine. You could read comic books, manga, same thing, uh, graphic novels. These are all kinds of comic books. Totally fine. You can read graded readers if you enjoy them, which are easier versions of stories and things. I'm doing that a little in Spanish. You can read children's books if you like them. You can read nonfiction, you know, history, business, psychology, religion, science, anything you want, as long as you like it. As long as you like it. It's free and voluntary. So the idea is you just, it's so simple. You get a book that you like and you just read every day. And then you get another book you like and you read some more. If you like reading the newspaper, then in the news, you can, it would also mean the newspaper. If you like reading magazines, that's also fine. But the key thing is that it's pleasure reading. Okay. This is not a sign to you. Nobody's forcing you to do it. It's not for the purpose of a test. You're not trying to pass a test. It's not for the purpose of memorizing. So it's not lists of words. Okay, it's real information. It's either a story. If it's fiction, then it's a story. If it's nonfiction, then it's useful information for you. So that's the key criteria, the kind of the key type of reading that you must do. Free voluntary reading or reading for pleasure. And this is number one for vocab. Okay, this is also the best way to improve your writing in English and in your own language. Because most of your writing skill comes from reading, just like most of your speaking comes from listening, right? You got to have it. It has to come into you first before you can produce it and it can come back out. Well, it's the same idea with writing. As you, if you read lots and 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 lots of books, you will kind of naturally begin to acquire, get, learn deeply uh, the sentence structures, the correct grammar, the correct spelling of words, because you've seen them again and again. And it kind of just, you know, it, it's very much like spoken. We remember when I talked to Oscar. And he was saying that, you know, the, how do you learn grammar? Like that the natural way is that it, you just learn what sounds right, right? That if you hear yesterday he go, it doesn't sound right. You don't need to think, is this the singular or the plural? Is it simple past or present? You don't need to think of any of that stuff. It just sounds wrong. So you get a feeling for what yesterday he went. Uh, that sounds right. So this is a feeling for correct grammar. Well, that's not only for speaking, that's also for writing. It's also for spelling. Where And this is how, like uh, for my spelling in English, if I look at a word, I just can, I can see that it, it looks wrong, right? I'm not trying to spell it in my mind letter by letter, uh, uh, duh, 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 right? I just instantly, I look at it, it looks wrong or it looks right. And that's how... That's how we really learn to, to spell well. So in, in, for in, And in English, spelling is important. Some languages it's quite easy, but in English it's a little difficult. 
Um, what else? So it's going to improve your writing, both in terms of spelling, but especially in terms of it helping your sentence structures, your ability to write a good sentence. All of these things are improved by this kind of reading. Reading, reading, reading for pleasure. Lots and lots and lots of books. It doesn't have to be literature. Okay, this is important too. You do not have to read super difficult things. You don't need to read... Um, I always think in English. You don't, you don't have to read Hemingway. You don't have to read uh, Dickens, okay? You, you, you can. If you like it, you can, of course. But you can just read, like I said, you can read comic books. You can read comic books. If you like comic books, you can read Spider-Man if you want to. That's fine. That's totally fine. And you can read uh, Goose, the Goosebumps books. You can read the Hardy Boys you can move on up to, you can read Stephen King if you like that Stephen King scary type of stuff. Tom Clancy if you like the spy stuff, the military stuff. Okay, it doesn't have to be art, high art, super literature, you know. Uh, it doesn't have to be that. It can just be anything you like. And the other thing is it doesn't even, it doesn't have to be fiction. Look, I don't read much fiction anymore. I like nonfiction. So you can... The, the, you can totally just read Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and other Kiyosaki books, Your Money or Your Life. Or if you're into other topics, then you can read about those topics. So it can be anything like that, too. This is, It will help your speaking. This is how you get vocab, okay? This is how you get vocabulary. Now, to help your speaking even more, to learn the, the pronunciation of the words, it definitely helps to have the audio also. It's, that's great. But you don't have to... Okay, don't get stressed about it. Some people get stressed. They think, oh, I only have the book. I don't have the audio. And then they don't want to read it. But that's... You don't need the audio for every single thing you read. Okay, it's not necessary. Just try to get audio when you can. If you can't, if you still think the book is interesting or you really want to read it, it's okay. Still read it. You can still read it. I'm reading this little story I'm reading in Spanish now. There's no audio. It doesn't matter. I'm just still reading it anyway. It's kind of a nice, fun story. It's perfect level for me. So you can do that same thing. Okay. You if Try to find an audio. If you can't find one, it doesn't matter. Just read, 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 read. And you're, this is going to build up your vocab. It helps you with sentence structures because you can really see these clear sentences. You know, you can go very slowly when you read. And this helps your brain kind of process and understand everything very clearly and notice things more clearly. Uh, so in that way, it's better than listening because listening so fast. Now, listening has other advantages, right? I mean, listening trains you for speed. Listening trains you to guess meaning when you can't understand everything. Listening is super important, but reading also has some great power here. The reason that you learn vocabulary better with reading is because you can see the words very clearly. They're not, with listening, they're going so fast. If you don't know it, there's not much time to guess because the audio continues going, the person continues to speak. So it's, you have like one second, maybe less than one second to guess the meaning and then it's gone. There's not much time. But with reading, you can go slowly. You can stop at a word you don't know and you can look at it and think, oh, I think maybe I know. You can take a, a few seconds to try to guess. If you're using ebooks, you can actually, as Oscar said, you can just touch the word and get a definition from a dictionary instantly. And, and know, you'll know definitely the meaning. So it's nice, you can go nice and slowly, giving your brain time to process this difficult language, the new language. And that's why you will then un acquire, learn deeply, much more vocab from reading. Just because you can go more slowly and everything's much more clear. So that's one of the reasons it's so effective to read, 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 read as much as you can. So we should not neglect reading. I think that it's totally fine that there, at some times in your English learning or any language, there, there will be times when you mostly want to listen. 
Like for me in the beginning, I'm mostly listening. I'm hammering away at listening, listening, listening. I want to get used to the sounds. I want to get used to the rhythm, the basic structure. The, uh, and I've been doing that for three months. But now I am realizing that my vocabulary is quite limited in Japanese. That this is, I'm starting to feel like I kind of understand the basic, like I understand basic sentence structures, not complicated ones, but the basic stuff I understand. I get, I understand how the language works. I'm comfortable with the sounds and everything, but, um, but my vocabulary is not enough. So I'm really feeling the need to learn a lot of words now. And I know, well, that means I need to change. I need to start putting a little more time into reading now. And maybe cutting back my listening a bit and increasing my reading time. And I may do that for a while. And then I'll go at later, a few months later, maybe I'll come back and I'll say, oh, now I'm ready to do more listening again and focus on speaking and improving pronunciation. And so you can kind of go back and forth again. It's one of these things because you are the boss. You are the boss of your learning. You're an independent learner. You can decide and you can change this. Every day, every week, every month, it's up to you. You decide what you need right now. But don't neglect it. The power of reading. It's really, really great. So please go watch that video again, Power of Reading, Stephen Krashen on YouTube. And if you like, if you're interested in the research, like the actual more specific research, you can get his book as well. All right, let's, uh, let's discuss reading. Going to your questions and comments. Paulika, right away. Comic books are so great. You can read and totally forget you are learning English. Yes, I like Asterix and Obelix, Donald Duck, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I collect them, actually. Fantastic. That's right. And another thing about comic books that help is their pictures. This helps you understand, right? You get it's, it's, It is easier to understand them because you do have some visual information you can kind of get an idea of the action. You see who is talking to whom. You, um, you can kind of see the emotion on the characters' faces. So all of this actually helps you make guesses and uh, also just creates pictures in your mind to connect the vocab, the new vocab. So it all helps you remember. This is why I'm doing anime now, anime and manga. It's, it's because the pictures help me a lot, right? The just a book is too hard for me right now in Japanese. It's, it's a little too much. But if I have all those pictures, it's, it's, a, it's a lot easier to remember. And the stories are usually very funny and or interesting. All these great reasons. Like just Paulika said, many times you just forget that you're doing a language learning because the story is interesting to you. And you can see that's a wide variety of different... There's so many kinds of manga or comics now, you know, from very, uh, like, funny to kind of fantasy, sci-fi, drama, crime, thrillers, superheroes, uh, what you know, little animals. It's a... So there's, there's a huge variety. So you can, you'll find something you like. The law says, I like to read Diary of Wimpy Kids. It's fun and easy. Perfect. Very good. Very, very good. Can you we be fluent by reading and listening as well? Yes, I think that's the combo you want. And of course, eventually, when you're ready, you start speaking and you, you got to kind of, that takes some time. But the foundation. Reading and listening. Correct. Devon, thank you. Uh, which is better, Tom Tom says, to read aloud or silently? I don't know if there's any research about it. Like, I don't remember that question in Krashen's book. I think it's mostly silent, though, that he studied. So I think it really doesn't matter, honestly. I think it doesn't matter. If you're trying to work on your pronunciation and you're speaking, then you might try reading aloud a little bit. But if you find that stressful or distracting, silent reading is okay. Just read is the key thing.
Yeah, and Priscilla with an excellent point. The difficulty level of the book is very important. When I try to read a book with many words I don't know, I feel frustrated. Seems my brain will boil. <laughs> nice. So I choose an easier book, and that's all you do. Just choose an easier book. If you bought the book, don't throw it away. Keep it for later because you can come back, you know, maybe six months later, whatever, and try again, and you might, six months later, that book might now be easy enough. So don't get stressed if you buy a book, it's too difficult. Just, just try it later and find something that's easier for now. Well, yeah, Eva is a good point about reading and writing. Reading isn't the best way to boost writing skill. It's the only way. To be frank, English spelling is crazy. Yes. And counterintuitive. Yes, often it is. But when you have read enough, you kind of have a feeling of how to write it. Well, that's right. Exactly. Again, you get a feeling for for the correct spelling. Why? Because you've seen the word. It's it's a, it's a visual thing, right? That a word just you just kind of it looks right or it looks wrong. Um, okay. Of course, in the very beginning of reading, the, uh, learning to read English, you can learn the basic sounds of the the letters. The common sounds of the letters, uh, which is called basic phonics. But that's all you need. After that, you really will start to just see the whole word. It's almost like a character in Japanese where you just see the whole word, what it looks like, and it looks right or it looks wrong. Okay. Um, George asks, can you advise me some books of modern, authentic American writers who use like present day lexicon? Well, I mean, any anyone writing now is going to use modern language. Almost anyone. I don't know. I, like I said, I don't read fiction much now. I certainly don't read anything new. So I, I honestly, I can't tell you. <laughs> I, I like older writers. You know, like I, I like uh, Hemingway. He's not really new. I like Kerouac. Um, also not new. I can't. I'm sorry. Mostly for, uh, in terms of new books or current books, I read uh, nonfiction mostly. More than mostly, only. <laughs> yeah, Papalik has kind of has done the same that I have. He said, I'm so focused on listening during our challenge since I started. I have not read enough. I'm going to change after that because I like to read for pleasure. Yeah, and that's totally fine. It's fine to have a intensive listening period. That I think it's helped me a lot. I feel very really good about my listening uh, it definitely has improved quite a lot because of this challenge. And now I'm ready to kind of move to more reading. I'm not going to quit listening. Just do more reading. Okay, like this is fine. Mulsa says, yesterday I downloaded Goosebumps. A book called uh, the title "Welcome to Dead House." Every day I read just two pages because there are many words I don't know, but I like the story. Thanks for your recommendation. There you go. You can do that too. If you find something's a bit difficult, you can just go very slowly with it. It's okay if you, as long as you're enjoying it. That's the key thing. That's very important.
which of Hemingway books would you recommend? Old Man and the Sea maybe is a good one to start because it's short. There, uh, there's a few others like these are kind of his more shorter stories. A Movable Feast is a nice one. It's just about his life in Paris. It's, so it's not a it's a short story about his life as a writer and you know, when he was young and poor <laughs> living in Paris. So it's nothing dramatic. But I like that. There's one. Uh, snow. It's called Snows. Snows of Kilimanjaro, I think. Another short story, which is him kind of imagining his death which he, he was pretty close, actually. <laughs> uh, not that that's how he died, but... but um, Yeah, anyway, it's a, that's a good one, too. These are all shorter. My, I, I recommend starting with short instead of something huge. Pimal's reading the Bhagavad Gita by Prabhupada. Yeah, good. Let's improve my English. Excellent. Great. I have that exact book myself, that translation. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. Elena says, Yesterday I was surprised hearing my three-year-old daughter imitating your introduction to the show. Hi, I'm AJ Hogue, the author of Effortless English. She learned it subconsciously. Next time I'll record her. Very fun. Well, that's cool. That is really cool. These little children are sponges, you know. They just suck, they just suck up the language. They learn so fast; it's amazing. That's really neat. Great. <laughs> okay, like here's a great Oda. It says, "Right now, I'm learning your Power English Chapter Nine: The Power of Reading." Exactly. My Power English course has a unit on this exact topic. Should I read the transcript, or is it enough to listen to your audio only? If you understand everything, just listen. It's fine. Otherwise, go ahead and read. Read just read it once. You know it's enough. Oh yeah, you can use my book. Antonio says the first book I read in English was Effortless English. It's by me. Great book and easy to understand. Thanks, AJ. Yes, my book's pretty easy. Not too, t not too tough. You can, you can certainly use my book, and the audiobook's free. Eba recommends My Side of the Mountain. Great book, fairly easy. Cool. Hey, Ed, nice to see you. Thank you. Which is better, silent reading or audiobook? Well, really, they're both fine. They're both good. I, I recommend doing both. So what I recommend, you know, first, let's say you have one chapter. So you read the chapter silently yourself. Do your best. You, you, you'll, you'll probably have some new words. You might not know the pronunciation for some of them. You try to guess. Then you listen to the audiobook and you'll hear the pronunciation correctly. Oh, okay, so Dr. Krashen mentioned in his speech the Read Aloud Handbook by Jim Trelease. There you go. For those of you interested in reading aloud. I personally read silently myself. I don't read aloud. But there's, you, you can do it if you want to. Like, again, like, you know, my philosophy is that do what you enjoy doing with reading. I mean, the whole idea is, right, it's, it's reading for pleasure. So if reading aloud makes you feel stressed, then don't read aloud. That's my opinion. If reading aloud, you enjoy it, then do it. Yeah, Zohar, with a good point, that with comics, you have to also use your imagination more compared to a movie. And a comic, uh, Zahra says, when you read a comic book, there's a space between what's happening on the panel. You have to literally see in your mind. You have to imagine, right? You've got to fill in what's between the panels. That's not true of movies where you see everything. I agree.
Yeah, and this is a good way to do it, like what Sarah did. Before the challenge, I didn't like reading at all. During the challenge, I started reading. Little by little, I increased my time to read. Now I enjoy reading. Thank you, AJ, for your support. And that's great. That's If, if you don't like it or if it feels difficult in another language like English, then you just start in, with very small amounts and increase gradually. AJ, when will you write books again? I don't know. I, I'm not going to write about English learning anymore, I think. I've, everything I need to say, I say in this show. If I might do some other topic, I'll write a book about it. We'll see. Yeah, I agree with Vladislav, actually, his thoughts on reading aloud. Maybe shadowing is better than reading aloud. When you read, sometimes you're not sure how to pronounce a word. I agree. When you're shadowing, you're hearing the correct pronunciation as you do it. So you're you're 100% getting it correctly. You're hearing it, right? And then you're trying to imitate at the same time. With reading aloud, you're not quite sure. But of course, you're kind of pronouncing it in your head when you're doing it silently. So this is just always true in English. As Oscar was pointing out, in some languages, you don't, there, you don't have this problem. Like in Spanish, it's not a problem. You can read, you know how to pronounce every word. You see it, and then it's pronounced the way that it is. Of course, there are accent differences and things, but the general pronunciation of a Spanish word, if you, if you can read it, and it's the same, which is great. <laughs> it's really great. Uh, in English, as you know, that's not true. So there's always going to be even for native speakers, right? Even for me, if I find a new word I've never seen before, I'm not always sure how to pronounce it. I guess. Usually I just guess. I don't look it in the dictionary. Usually I just guess. And eventually I'll kind of hear it somewhere. If I, Of course, if you have an audiobook, you'll hear it. Elena with another good point. If you don't like reading, you didn't find the right book. Well said. Yeah, that's another good point. If you don't like reading, maybe it's not reading in general. Maybe that's not the problem, actually. Maybe you're just trying to read things that are not enjoyable to you. You know, like a lot of people do this, especially when they're learning English and other, as a foreign language. They think, for example, a lot of people try to read the newspaper. A lot of people, a lot of learners. And if you really are into that, that really you know excites you, that's fine. But you know, a lot of people actually don't like reading the newspaper, but they're kind of they're forcing themselves to do it because they think it's important. They think it's a you're supposed to do that, you know, and uh, and so they they don't like it. And then they say, I don't like reading, or I don't like reading in English. Well, the problem is you're just reading something you don't like. That's all. But maybe you, maybe you, you should be reading comic books. Maybe if you just read a comic book like, you know, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Detective Conan or something like that, you might love it. You might love it and want to read all of them. So, or, or Attack on Titan, something really interesting and strange and weird and, and fun, you know, that's that kind of thing. So... This is the problem is some people, they try to force themselves, especially, you know, I think it's coming from a strong motivation, which is can be good, but people have an idea they have to read something serious. I have to read something serious. I have to read Hemingway. I have to read, uh, I don't know, Dickens. I have to read the newspaper. I have to read science books. You don't have to read serious stuff. You don't. You can just read very light things if you want to. It's what you enjoy, right? Some people, now, if you enjoy the serious stuff, then you should definitely do it. Ah, so Russian similar. Russian is also a kind of language, this is Vladislav, in which you see a word, you're likely to pronounce it correctly. There are some exceptions, uh, but in general. That's nice. It's very helpful to f foreign language learners. <laughs> English is, uh, you know, English is tough. We, we, even students, you know, kids growing up in, in America. So, you know, Japanese kids in school, 
and as you know, when they're young, they have to learn all those characters. They have to memorize all those thousands of characters. Well, what uh, English speaking kids have to learn is they have to learn spelling. I can remember taking spelling tests every week in school. Yeah, you know, Alexi's a good point. Movies in most cases develop people's stupidity. I ceased to watch any movies one year ago, replaced it with books. Brain started to feel better. Books, I mean, definitely you're right. In general, you're correct. Uh, let's see. Dico asks... If someone reads a book and understands 50%, is that okay to continue reading without a dictionary? Hmm. That's a lot of unknown words. That's tough. I'm not going to give you a rule. I think uh, I think it's okay if you're if you like it, if you're not getting frustrated. I would be frustrated by that. I would have to use a dictionary. But I would use an ebook and just touch the words and keep going. You know, touch the word, see the meaning, touch the word, see the meaning, touch the word, see the meaning. Very quickly using ebooks. Even then, 50% is quite a lot. But yeah, I might do it. I mean, I'm kind of doing that now in Japanese. I, I don't understand. I understand less than 50%. So, yes, I'd say it's fine, but I would use a dictionary. But, but in that case, I would not use a paper dictionary I would use an ebook don't use a paper book because this will be so slow use an ebook where you can just uh, if you have a phone you can touch if you're on your computer you can just click the word see the meaning immediately a translation immediately and then keep going and then you can go through something difficult like that you can go through much faster so that's how I would do it Yeah, and Eva says, like, graded readers are also good. Yes, correct. Hmm. Is reading helpful in getting better in conversation? Uh, yeah. I mean, anything that helps vocab, I think, is going to help your conversation ability. Especially in, in a more, what you might call, I don't know, educated level. You're not, you know, reading will be less helpful for things like slang and idioms and very casual speech and... Very, you know, the kind of casual, quick pronunciation for reading is less helpful for that. But, but it's very helpful for vocabulary, spoken grammar, which are important. What's your opinion, Priscilla says, about Google Translate? It's okay. It seems to work okay. I use, um, when I'm doing Japanese, I have I use two different ones. There's one called Jisho, and one, and I use Google Translate. And sometimes like I can't. Sometimes one of them has a bad translation, or no translation. So then I use the other one. So you can do that. English is less of a. I think English is easier because English is so common, right? That it's easier to find a good dictionary for English. Bimal says, what's the best English learning app? I don't like apps. Just read. <laughs> Just read and listen. I don't think you really need an app. Kindle. I use the Kindle app for reading ebooks, but any ebook reader will be fine. And, you know, MP3 player for listening. That's all you need. You don't need really any kind of complicated apps. Yeah, like, so Lisa's. It says, I started reading English for pleasure with stories, simplified novels that I can listen to at the same time. Great. Now I try to read books with a higher level. It helps me a lot to read the subtitles of movies. All good suggestions. So, reading simplified novels, also called graded readers. Yes, great. Especially if they have an audio, even better as she said, and then try to jump up to the full books, the real books. And then another thing you can do is read subtitles of movies. You can even find like the download the files 
you know, so it's a we can read it all very fast instead of having to wait for the movie. That's what I'm doing with the anime, the Japanese anime. I just downloaded this subtitle, uh, basically the script. And then I can read it faster. Or I can read it slower. <laughs> That's the other thing you can do. You can read it slowly if you download it. Because otherwise, if you're watching, you have to pause, 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 pause. It's kind of annoying. So that's, I, I, I go very slowly as I'm reading. Oh, Jack London is a great one, Ihor. Ihor Billobron says, what do you think about Jack London books? Would you recommend something? Yeah, what is it? White Fang is really good. Um, uh, what's the name? Is that the one? There's one about a dog. Like a husky up in Alaska. I can't remember the name. It might be White Fang. There, are, He did some great ones. They're all about the outdoors and things like that. You know, he lived in, in, the, in the West and up in Alaska. Yeah, any Jack London books would be fine. I don't remember the titles so much, but any of them. And there tends to be shorter too. Let's see if I understand this question. Ahmed says, given that listening and reading are receptive skills, yes. What is your take on the effect of listening comprehension on reading? Um, well, it helps, for sure. Because if you've heard a word before and you know the word, then you're it's a lot easier to read it, right? You see it, and you'll kind of, maybe the first time you'll, you kind of, what is that word? And you go, uh, let's say the word wealth. Wealth, W-E-A-L-T-H. Wealth. So let's say you learn this word wealth from listening first. You never see it. You never see it. You never read it. You just hear it. Wealth, wealth, wealth. And you know the meaning. You know it means, you know, having a lot of money. Well, then the first time when you're reading it, the first time you see it in a book, yeah, you might, for a second, you might have to say, what is this word? You've never seen it before. But you can kind of go, well, and you, you probably will understand it probably the first time immediately because of the uh, you know i'm guessing you'll you'll see it in a context in a situation that's talking about money where you'll kind of know you can guess it and then just by kind of getting the first sound where where you know the word already it should be an easy guess ah wealth and you keep going so yes when you do know a word from listening first you should be able to read it quite easily in most cases so it does help. But the opposite is true also. When you learn a word from reading, you kind of guess the pronunciation. You might be a little wrong, but when you hear it and listening then later, you're more likely to, oh yeah, that's the word I read. You're more likely to say, ah, that's how you say it. Sometimes maybe no, but overall, they both help each other. Sarah, yeah, Longman Dictionary is fine. Oh, okay, Gabe, Gabrielle with an interesting question. I'm reading a book called The Gospel According to Spiritism, and many words I see are, these are kind of old style of English. Thou, to thee, thy, thine. Do I have to stop reading it? No, if you like the book, go ahead and read it. But of course, we don't speak this way anymore. You know, you'll see these words in Shakespeare, for example. These are kind of the old um, formal uh, pronouns that we don't use anymore. It's kind of sort of similar in Spanish. Do you know how to? T-U, tu, or vosotros. Um Kind of like that, but we don't do it anymore in English. But they used to say that. But yeah, go ahead and read it still for enjoyment. It's okay. If you like it, if you're really enjoying the book, it's something that, you know, it's a topic that's really interesting to you, go ahead and read it. Don't, it's fine. Just kind of ignore those words, you know, or just change them to you, your, in your mind, kind of imagine you, your. Okay, so this is 
kind of getting back to what I was saying from uh, Lilian. Lilian, what kind of book do you read often? Do I need to read a lot of reference books to improve my vocab? No! <laughs> Dame, no. <laughs> Not reference books. Unless you're a fairly strange person who likes reading reference books. <laughs> Most people don't. Um, no, read real books. Storybooks, interesting, you know, self-help, anything, but real books. Uh, Priscilla says, is there anime in English too or only Japanese? Oh, there's a lot of it in English now. A lot of it has been, uh, a lot of the Japanese anime has been translated and dubbed, meaning it's English speaking actors doing it. So you can find a lot of it. It's very popular. Uh, and there's probably some that's in the anime style that's originally in English. So there, I, I don't know because I actually never really done it in, in English, but uh, there is a yes, I know for sure that it's popular. Ah, oh, Vladislav, no, is asking, did you read War and Peace? I have not. Uh, we learned it at school. Of course, every Russian should read it. <laughs> but we are. Uh, but we were not ready. It was tough for us. I still not decided to read it. It seems too much. Yeah. Well, you know, I understand. You know, we 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 have for us. It's probably Shakespeare, right? So for English speakers, Shakespeare is our version of Tolstoy. Or <laughs> it can also be tough. Although I like some Shakespeare. I I I mean now I like a lot of it. It can be a little tough. I find it easier to read than to hear, actually. So, so there's some Shakespeare movies, and I find the that actually I have a harder time understanding the speech sometimes because of the actor's pronunciation. But if I'm reading it, I can see it, so I can kind of understand, you know, it, I, it's obvious what the word is. But with the strange pronunciation sometimes from the actor's, uh, often it's a little difficult to follow for me uh, with listening. This is my own language, but of course it's a, a little bit strange because the like a lot of the British uh, uh, British Shakespearean actors they like to, for example, they'll say they'll pronounce the past tense words like you know ed. So we say remembered, for example, remembered yesterday. You know, I remembered what I needed to. So remembered with an ed at the end. But these Shakespearean actors they'll say remembered. Remember, Ed, they're kind of very over pronouncing every single little sound. And okay, that's one word, but they're doing it with, with every single word. And then they're pronouncing these kind of very old words. And uh, I find it kind of tough to understand sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do this. Oda says, in my master's degree program, my lecturer had us read at least one journal article per day. No, stay away from that. <laughs> I don't understand most of the words, how to deal with it. Avoid it. No, no, no. This is not pleasure reading. This is not free voluntary reading. This is not real reading. Academic writing sucks. <laughs> Academic articles suck. They're crap writing. They're terrible. That's why you can't understand it. Don't read that garbage. No, no, no. You'll hate yourself. You'll you'll want to uh, you want to quit English. Don't do it. No, no, no. Read read a comic book. <laughs> okay, much better to read a comic book. Don't read that stuff. Don't no, no academic, no school stuff, no textbooks, no journals, no reference books, nothing like that. Uh, Mole says, how do we get your book? Oh, it's on Amazon.com. My book is on Kobo.com. Those are kind of the big ones, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Asukar says, 
practice listening, but I got easy stories for kids' books. Uh, I enjoy, can I read them or not? Of course, read them. If you enjoy, read. I want to read business books, says Ken. Yes, perfect. Read a lot of business books. Excellent, excellent. If you're into business, read business books. If you're into science, read science books. That's totally fine. Nonfiction's great. Nonfiction's great. Just don't read, don't read, you know, like for Ken, don't read uh, some academic research journal about business. Blech. You know, read general business books. That's totally fine. Okay, again, I don't like this uh, this this approach. It's, it's, the question's fine, but Pachu says, which newspaper is good for international English language test preparation? Don't do that. This is what I was talking about before, this idea you think, oh, to prepare for the TOEFL or the IELTS, then I must read newspapers. I will now force myself to read newspapers every day. Do you really like it? No, don't. You don't have to read newspapers. You don't have to. Why newspapers? You can read books. Read books. Books are better. They're more interesting. Newspapers are depressing. Newspapers are full of lies. It's all lies. Fake news and lies. It just makes you afraid and depressed and fills your brain with a bunch of lies. Don't read that garbage. Read books. Read a book that you like. Read a lot of books that you like. It will still help you for the test preparation. More importantly, it will help you with English in general. More importantly, you actually learn useful things or enjoy nice stories. Read books, read books, read books, including comic books. So, no, I don't recommend newspapers. They're garbage. Um, Ni nee says, I've seen your videos so much, sometimes I can't understand everything you say. How can I have the skill to understand? Well, YouTube automatically creates uh, subtitles. So you could turn those on. It's CC, closed caption. You can turn that on. They're not 100% correct, but good enough, especially English, especially my speaking. So you could use that. It'll help. Okay, so yes, good question. If you're going to read the Bible, is it better to use the New Living Translation? Right, so I'm answering only, I'm not answering, this is not a religious answer. It, this is an English answer that, yes, you would want to read, to help your English, you'd want to read the Bible in a more modern translation, Right? Rather, for example, the King James. You know, I, I know you, you can argue about what if maybe one, some of the older translations are better translations or more true. But for English learning, you know, the King James Bible, I mean, like, for, it's very hard for me to read. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, I can read it, but I find the language very frustrating. It's, it's, again, it's that old kind of almost Shakespearean type of that older style of English that we don't use anymore. And so, yes, if you want to read the Bible and do it in English, in a way that's going to help your English also, then read a, a more current uh, translation of the Bible that uses more of a kind of standard modern English. It would be excellent. So if you're Christian, that would be a great way to, you could, to read the Bible every day, and you're improving your English too. And you're going to have a huge amount of vocab in the Bible. And that's, that's true for anything. That's true of the Gita, the Upanishads, anything, sutras, whatever. Oh, Ihor saying White Fang is a hard book to read in English. Okay, so Jack London might be a bit tough. Ah, okay. Merrick says... I have a question. Can ordinary Americans understand British vocabulary? For example, instead of elevator, someone says lift. Or vacation, holiday, subway, underground, gas, petrol. Yes, those common ones you just mentioned 
Americans understand. Because we get some British movies, right? We've all seen Hugh Grant movies, <laughs> right? We've all seen Hugh Grant comedies and romantic comedies, for example. We've all seen Bridget Jones' Diary. Um, Notting Hill, you know, those, those, right? So every now and then there's there's kind of a big, famous, popular British movie. So we've been exposed to enough of these common, not like street, super street slang, right? Maybe we don't understand, but this kind of common stuff, like, yes, we've heard them. We've heard them. I mean, first of all, vacation and holiday are pretty much, we can use either one of those, either one of those. Underground is very logical. Subway underground. Petrol, we've heard that. We've all heard that a thousand times in movies. So yes, we do. It's not a problem. And the same, of course, British people all understand the common American ones. Because why? They get all these American uh, TV shows and movies. They've all heard gas and subway and elevator and things like that. They've heard those many times too. So it's not a big problem. All right, a couple more, and then I am going to go. Oh, by the way, VIP members, check your email. I sent the email. So for my business English course, discount code for you. Get it and use it. Use it this week. It's It will end soon. So use it, VIP members. Check your inbox. Check your spam folder. I just I sent it yesterday, so check for that email. Oh, okay. It's in with a a very good question. Is it okay to not not Try to understand every word in a book. Totally okay. In fact, probably the best. <laughs> uh, it, it can be stressful trying to, I must understand every word. It's fine to just skip words sometimes and just guess. Just guess. That's I, uh, Yes, of course, that's totally fine. If you're really focused on the content, the subject, the story, you're going along, you don't want to waste time checking the dictionary too much. It's distracting you from the book. Just guess and keep going and don't use the dictionary. That's totally fine also. It is, yes, it's totally fine. It's a very good question. Ah, Santosh says, do I have a course for public speaking and presentation skills? I don't. I was going to make one. I was actually starting to make one and I just uh, changed and I did... I think I did my pronunciation course instead. But I still a topic I'd like to do a course about public speaking and presentations would be fun. Yeah, I mean, hamster key, really, it is this simple. You know, we can talk and talk and talk about it, but it, it's really very simple. What I realized is that everything goes back to common sense. What should you read? What you're interested in? You're right. School taught us not to be simple and to do things we don't want. Right. I mean, the, the, I'm repeating myself again and again. Why? Because I know so many of you, you well, you saw with the question about the newspaper. So many of you have been kind of uh, programmed or brainwashed or persuaded to you know, try to force yourself to read a lot of stuff that's boring, that you don't like, that's not effective, all this kind of school stuff, you know. So many people think, oh, I have to read vocabulary books. I have to read test preparation books. I have to read academic research journals. I have to read the newspaper. But you don't. None of that is necessary. In fact, most of that is harmful. Why is it harmful? Because a lot of that writing is just bad. Academic journals are terrible. 
Academics are terrible writers. They're horrible. So you don't even, you don't want to read that. It's garbage because it's bad writing, number one. And number two, the big one is that, that they're boring and unenjoyable and uninteresting. So they're going to destroy your motivation. You're going to hate it. <laughs> and if you hate it, you won't want to do it very much. So it is. it really is simple. What Krashen's saying, what I'm saying, it's pretty darn simple. Read what you enjoy. Read real stuff. I just summarized the whole thing in two sentences, okay? It is that simple. Oh, Gabriel says, no, see, Gabriel, this is on the other side, like Zen. It says, AJ, I'm addicted to checking the meaning of new words in Portuguese. What can I do? That's also fine, Gabriel. So again, it's what you're enjoying. So there's not a, right? So I think Zin was saying she gets distracted by it and doesn't like it. So you don't have to do it. The point is you don't have to. But if you want to, it's okay. Like right now in Japanese, I'm checking pretty much every word. In Spanish, I will skip words and guess more. In English, I always, I never use a dictionary in English. I always just guess and keep going. So it's really up to you. It's up to you. And it, it, it depends on your level. I think, I think as you go higher levels and you get more advanced, it becomes easier to guess. And uh, maybe a little more annoying to use a dictionary a lot. And at the low levels, uh, beginner levels, uh, you, can't, you have to use a dictionary, really, or you'll never understand anything. So it's, uh, you know, it can vary. That, that's the cool thing is you're in charge. You can do what you want it to do. It's, that's why it's better than school. Nobody's forcing you to do it some certain way. Oh, I got to go. I got to go take care of some babies. Take care of my little babies. Um, okay, this is an interesting question. I'm going to end with this one. This is a kind of a deep question. This is not really so much about the English, but really more the, the ideas of a book. Faishan Rao says, um, how do I reflect upon and connect with different ideas in the books that I'm reading to create my own thinking, not just imitating the author's thinking? So it's a very good point. And that's it's how how do you go from re, this this is even not just books, just anything, learning from someone, right? Learning from a book or learning from a teacher, learning from a coach, getting their ideas. How do you go from that where maybe you're just imitating to being your own original thinker? I think it's a process. I don't think, I think in the beginning, it's totally fine to just um imitate the author's thinking as you say you're because you're kind of not sure it's something new and maybe you just kind of take it in and you're using it right and just you're not really being creative when this is especially when we're more beginners in some area not only like something like english but even just in uh let's even say something like philosophy if you're just starting to read philosophy then you might, you know, you read Aristotle and you immediately you start kind of thinking like Aristotle. <laughs> and for a while you're, uh, you know, an Aristotle, an Aristotelian, would that be the word? Um, thinker. <laughs> uh, you're a big fan, right? Or in writing, this happens a lot with in art that if you're a writer, it's quite common for a writer that someone who's trying to be a writer that in the beginning, in their beginning when they're, starting to write stories and books that they're kind of not consciously maybe, but even subconsciously they're, they're imitating their favorite, their own favorite writers. And so they don't sound quite original yet, but I think that's kind of the, a first step that's necessary. I think I, I talk about this like with public speaking, 
giving presentations. I actually recommend that you do this. You know, in NLP, they call it modeling, where you are imitating someone better than you. You are trying to sound like them or to be like them. And I think in, when you're uh, still in those beginning and, and even kind of intermediate levels, that that's totally fine to do. You become creative, you become original as you become more advanced, as you read more and more and more, as you get more and more and more and more experience, bigger and wider ideas, uh, you try more and more things and fail and make mistakes and all of this, then you start to get a big variety of experiences and influences and then you combine them to create your own style, your own way. But that takes some time. That's kind of a, happens at the advanced levels. So again, as a public speaker, so for example, I don't know if there are any old videos of me speaking when, when I was really young, but if there are, you can kind of see I'm copying Tony Robbins. <laughs> it's not, it's kind of obvious because <laughs> I was, I was copying him. Uh, but, you know, I, my hands were, would shake. I could hardly talk at all. So it was very helpful to find someone who was really good and just copy them for a while. Of course, I don't look like Tony Robbins. I, didn't, I, I was never as good as Tony Robbins in that way. But just by trying to copy him, the way he moved, the way he talked, his confidence, all his high, high energy, it helped me make big, big, big improvements in my own public speaking and for a while. And then eventually... I watched and learned from other public speakers. I got more and more experience. I started doing more and more speeches. I, you know, I was a teacher. I was teaching in my classroom every single day. That's public speaking and practicing. So then with time, I developed very much my own style now so that I, I'm certainly not uh, Tony Robbins. I'm not trying to imitate Tony Robbins in any way. Very much my own style. I am. But so it's a kind of a process. So I wouldn't worry about it, Rao, is what I'm saying, is that it's okay to imitate the author's thinking for a while. Just keep reading, keep learning, and most importantly, get real life experience. That's where you develop your own thinking, really, is by real world, real life experience. Doing things in the real world, testing your ideas in the real world, testing the authors, the writers that you like, test their ideas in the real world, try things, sometimes fail, sometimes succeed, learn, grow, and then you will develop your own style, your own ability, your own creativity. That's how you do it. It's a process. All right, that's it. So just a final reminder that VIP members, I sent you a discount for my Business English Conversations course. A very nice discount. Very big one. <laughs> so VIP members, check your email now today. Do it. And if it's not in your email, check your spam folder. It might be in there. Check it. And you'll use that discount code that I sent you. You have to use it this week. Okay? You have to use it this week. It will expire. It will end. All right, everyone else, lots of love to you. Get out there and read. Again, go watch that speech. It's good listening practice. You can listen to somebody else talk, right? Get on YouTube, search for Power of Reading, Stephen Krashen. Watch that video. It's, a, it's one hour. See how much you understand. It's a very, very, very good speech. Okay, then. See you later. Bye.